The reason I wrote Comfortably Unaware is because there's no author or lecturer that is telling the entire story about our food choices and their immense effect that, that it has on our planet and our own health. We did in fact raise three children. None of the three have, have ever tasted meat or animal products. We also at the same time wanted to make sure that they understood the, the origins of their food. So uh, whatever was on their plate, we, in, in many cases, they, they picked. They understood exactly where things were grown, where they came from. Nearly 33% of all children under 15 are obese. And we never had an issue with that. Uh, we never had any issues with allergies. We never had any difficulty with mood swings of being you know, hyper, post-consumption of refined uh, carbohydrates like sugars, mostly from the from the meat and dairy products that we didn't allow them to have, um, and now that they wouldn't, they wouldn't eat. Yeah, so over the years, actually since 1976, I've had the privilege and the luxury of uh, treating numerous patients, thousands of them, and it's given me the, the luxury of being able to see and treat, uh, I would call it more of a first line of, of medical illnesses. We will do things such as do screenings, uh, do nutritional analysis and counseling, guide them correctly in terms of uh, their food choices, and uh, sort of tie it all in together with their medical status. Many times we'll see uh, diabetes, hypertension, numerous diseases that, are, that manifest themselves in and around the oral tissues. Uh, there's been a great correlation between periodontal disease, gum tissue type disease, bone disease, and heart disease. We've made a great deal of progress with all the increased public attention of the ill effects of factory farming. There's an equally strong message telling everyone that it's perfectly fine. It's, it's okay to continue raising, slaughtering, and eating billions and billions of animals only now. You can now use pastures, grass-fed, small family farms, and our oceans to accomplish it. And, and better yet, we can use the word sustainable now to actually hide behind. And that's the message that millions and millions and millions of people are hearing. We need to be constantly aware that if your food choice involves animals, that means all livestock, grass-fed or not, and fish. It's the driving force behind global depletion, and it's very, very real, and therefore it needs to be dealt with correctly. For instance, you've all heard that we need to vote with our forks, right? Yeah, we've all heard that, right? Vote with your forks. Well, don't do that. No, don't do that, because it's something we've been doing for the past 50 years, and look where it's gotten us. I mean, let's give ourselves more credit than that and actually become more aware of our food choices, and then vote with our minds first, and then let our forks follow. Certainly then it'll become forks over knives, much easier, I think. When you go to the farmer's market, let the local farmers know that you support them. Let them know that you want organically produced food and nothing that comes from raising animals because that uses too much land and water and affects our atmosphere and our health. Guide them, influence them. Again, you're gonna be voting with your minds first, not your forks. Now, about the Go Meatless on Monday campaign. If you do this, if you go meatless on Mondays, You'll be contributing to global warming, pollution, global depletion of our planet's resources, and your own health on only six days of the week. <laughs> Instead of seven. Global depletion involves water scarcity, agricultural land use inefficiencies, and uh, the state of our oceans and fish. So you have to include all those, and it seems like a daunting list, but it, that, that's, they're all affected. It, it's not sustainable, and it's, it's not healthy, and it's not humane. taken a farm that essentially for its entire history has been a conventional uh, animal agricultural farm with livestock where they raised, slaughtered, and ate uh, livestock and animals of all types. 
And we've taken that and now have brought in animals that are in need of being rescued, injured, abused, and they live here for the rest of their lives in harmony and peace with each other uh, without any fear of, of anything really and certainly not being uh, raised or eaten for food. They're, they're simply here uh, to live out uh, as natural life as possible in a rescue and sanctuary setting. Following 20 or 30 years of research and treating patients, I became so concerned about the effect of our food choices that I developed some plant-based or vegan food products and even a couple of healthy fast food restaurants to provide healthy, quick service food for the public and institutions that have no animal products and they're based totally on plant-based foods. This is our garden where we derive most, most of our food from, if not all of it. But more important than being a garden is that it's, it's essentially uh, what sustainability really, really does mean. It's the model of where all food and how food can be grown to preserve our resources and be truly sustainable for our planet and for ourselves. It's the healthiest way to raise food. When we're raising animals, we're really not raising food, we're raising animals and using all of our resources to provide for something that's actually unhealthy to consume. Um, happen to be standing next to uh, some kale. Over there there's some uh, collard greens and there's some things that are some of the healthiest possible foods that you can eat. And also from a global growing standpoint you can produce over a period of a year or two you can produce the thousands and thousands of pounds of the healthiest food possible. It's about the fact that our, our civilization, they're unaware of the effect, uh, the detrimental effect of our food choices on themselves and on our planet. And I happen to call it global depletion. And it's the loss of our primary resources on Earth, as well as our own health. It's, it's still sustainability. It's just I think that it, everyone needs to hear it from a different direction. And they need to hear the, the whole story. And they also need to hear it through an unfiltered lens. And they're not, they're not really getting that right now. It was really important now, uh, more than ever, to make sure that the truth behind the fact that raising animals in an industrialized manner is not the problem. It's not an issue of factory farming, it's a problem of raising animals to eat, period. It's kind of a catchword right now, especially as it's being used in, in agriculture and in our, our food choices. It's a word that we can kind of hide behind now. The manner in which the direction of our food is going is towards grass-fed livestock and towards fish and things that other organizations and authors and lecturers are calling sustainable when in fact it's not. The earth and planet essentially and all the living things on it don't, don't have time while we're trying to find a way to make it work. We need to stop eating animal products now. You know, I can honestly say that, you know, I didn't really care about people or animals that much, even on a basic level. And um, I think the environment, the energy about being around you, it's, it's an energy that is, cares about everything around us. And so um, that trickles down to me, which now trickles down to the next generation, which is the generation that cares about not just what's around us but our whole environment. As we apply that to the book and everything that you're doing in the world, then we have to be um, comfortably aware about everything going on around us and that's our future generation and how we treat the world moving forward. All right, Priscilla, can you give everybody a big smile? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's it. That's a good girl.